So I'm going to talk about uh, pre a little bit about preoperative optimization and intraoperative anesthetic management. Um, I work in Newcastle upon Tyne. These are the transplant centres in the UK, and Newcastle is right in the middle of uh, uh, is right in the middle uh, is is right in the corner of um, England. Um, the Freeman Hospital VAD program started in 2003. We have done about 340-odd VADs. Uh, we do about 30 VADs each year, and most of them are usually hardware. Um, these are the 2016 ESC guidelines, which are very useful for preoperative optimization, and these are the 2013 ISHLT guidelines for mechanical circulatory support. Uh, uh, VADs are low-volume, high-cost, potentially life-saving interventions. But it's quite difficult to conduct meaningful randomized controlled trials. The poor methodological quality of the evidence base and the potential bias means that a lot of the evidence that you will see is usually class one and level C, which is basically consensus of expert opinion, uh, retrospective studies, uh, tr data trawling through uh, registries, etc. So let's look a little bit at, at the pathophysiology of heart failure. Um, the decrease in contractility uh, you, and uh, small pulse pressure usually means that these patients have got a small stroke volume. The increase in afterload uh, actually will make this stroke volume even smaller. Despite an increase in the LV and diastolic volume, you will not see an increase in the stroke volume. This decrease in contractile state um, usually um, causes um, a low fixed cardiac output state, decreased perfusion pressure. The increase in LV and diastolic pressure causes an increase in back pressure changes in RV afterload, failure, and ventricular dilatation. There's also an increase in sympathetic activity, venoconstriction, down regulation of receptors, uh, fluid retention, organ dysfunction. All in all, these patients who come to our anesthetic rooms have got very limited cardiac reserve. They also have altered pharmacokinetics because of hepatorenal dysfunction. So heart failure patients usually have two main problems as far as we're concerned, and one is hyperperfusion and congestion. Um, a lot of the patients that we tend to see are very hyperperfused and congested, the cold and the wet group. The aim of pre-optimization is to try and get them into the cold and dry group if possible, and then um, and try hard to get into warm and dry, but this is easier said than done. It doesn't really work. Um, so a lot of these patients, what do you try to do? You look at the blood pressure. If the blood pressure is high, then you can give vasodilators, diuretics, and maybe some inotropes if necessary. When the blood pressure is low, it's probably you need to use vasopressors to get the proper pressure up along with inotropes, uh, maybe CRRT, and as well as mechanical circulatory support. So why should we bother with pre-optimization? It is, we need it to treat heart failure. We need it to try and see if we can get away with an LVAD for right ventricular, by bi biventricular failure. Try and see if we can prevent RV failure post LVAD. Avoid temporary uh, or permanent RVADs and for better outcomes. The goals of pre-optimization are to identify the etiology of heart failure, treat congestion, optimize blood pressure and organ perfusion, and limit organ damage. One way of doing this is to try and restrict the amount of fluid these patients get, and 1 to 1.5 liters is usual in patients for, uh, with congestive symptoms. You can also take fluid off by using intravenous loop diuretics, such as frusamide, which is given either in intermittent boluses or as a continuous infusion. You can combine them with thiazide diuretics or spironolactone. If the kidneys don't work, then you might need to go for ultrafiltration or more commonly, renal replacement, continuous venous, venous hemofiltration. The aim is to try and get the CVP to single figures. And in, while doing this, you want to look at the trends rather than absolute numbers. And this, the reason for this is with dilated cardiomyopathy, we normally tend to see an increase in the wall stress. And this is because of the increase in the radius or the volume of the ventricle. Getting a smaller ventricle means lesser work, less energy, and hopefully less chances of getting RV failure. So pre-anesthetic assessment should include causes of heart failure, look at previous cardiac surgery, previous anesthetics,